I have a beautiful trick for you today. And anytime I see it come up in the exam or in practice questions, almost all of my students fall for it, at least initially. So I want you to avoid that trap, not get it wrong and learn the trick. If this is a new trick for you, do let me know in the comments. What is the trick? The trick is that the side opposite an angle in a shape such as a triangle corresponds to the size of the angle. Sounds quite simple and easy to say, but there are lots of different examples and I'm going to give you three today about how they could test this theory. Well, look at this question on screen. We're comparing quantity A, which is side AB of the triangle, with quantity B, which is side AC of the triangle. What would most students do? They would pick D. As I've written at the bottom, it looks like a D kind of answer, with D being, we can't tell, we need more information. Why? There are no numbers here. We don't know any of the lengths, A, B, A, C, B, C. And so how can we possibly work this out? Here's where my trick comes in. Let's quickly work out the missing angle in this triangle. We have a right angle, which is 90, another angle, which is 48, and the angles in the triangle add up to 180. So we can add 90 plus 48, take it away from 180, and find out that the missing angle is 42. But how does that help? It helps because of what I said about the trick. The side opposite to that 42 degree angle and the side opposite to the 48 degree angle correspond in size to the size of the angle. In other words, side AC, which is opposite the 42 degrees, is smaller than side AB, which is opposite the 48 degrees because the side opposite the 42 is smaller than the side opposite the 48, because 42 is smaller than 48. It's that simple. It's an amazing trick, little known, and I'm going to show you two other examples of how it can be tested. To finish this one off, we therefore know that side AB opposite the 48 degrees is bigger, so quantity A is bigger. How else can they test it? Let's take a look at this question. Triangle PQR on screen is inscribed within a circle. Just quickly, inscribed means touching all the edges. So the corners, the vertices of the triangle touch the circumference of the circle. Then it says PR is the diameter of the circle above. Many people would ignore that, but that's telling us crucial information. If you didn't know already, the angle opposite to the diameter in a circle is always 90 degrees. So we can actually add one more angle onto the triangle. We know because the question said that PR is the diameter. And based on a rule featured in another one of my videos, the angle opposite the diameter in an inscribed triangle is always 90 degrees. I'm not going to explain why in this video because I want to focus on my amazing other trick about sneaky angles. Anyway, we have all the three angles in this triangle, but how will that help us when the question is asking about the length of an arc, QR, and the length of another arc, PQ? Well, this is the second manifestation of my trick. Not only does the side of a triangle correspond to the size of the opposite angle, the arc opposite an inscribed angle also corresponds to the size of the angle. I know that sounds complicated, but it really isn't. The arc is just the pathway along the edge of the circumference. And the length of that pathway around the circumference corresponds to the angle that it's opposite to in an inscribed triangle. Let me demonstrate. Look at this arrow. The 51 degrees angle P is opposite to the arc QR. Just quickly, why is it called a minor arc? Well, you could go the long way around the circle, starting at Q, going down all the way around to R. That would be called a major arc. But the minor arc is the quick way, going from Q along the top to R. Sometimes in the exam, they just skip the word minor because they assume you know we're talking about the quick way. I've given it its full title, the minor arc QR. That arc corresponds in size to the 51 degrees. Let me give you another example. Look at this arc, 
the arc PQ going from P around the circumference to Q. That corresponds in size to the angle it's opposite to, which is the 39 degrees. And here's the answer to the question. Because quantity A, the arc QR, was opposite to the 51 degrees, it must be a bigger arc than the arc PQ, because the arc PQ is opposite to 39 degrees. 51 degrees is bigger than 39 degrees, so the arc opposite the 51 degrees, QR, must be bigger than the arc opposite the 39 degrees, PQ. Of course, the biggest arc of all is the one opposite the 90 degrees, PR, but that isn't the focus of the question. In summary, QR quantity A is bigger because the inscribed angle that it's opposite to is bigger than the angle opposite PQ. It's an amazing and quick trick if you understand what's going on. For 95% of students, what I've already said is enough, but I'm gonna give one final example for those pushing for a 170 in the GRE or a 700 plus in the GMAT with this final example. Triangle XYZ is inscribed within a circle. XY passes through O, the center of the circle. What is the ratio of minor arc YZ to minor arc XZ? Feel free to pause and have a go yourself. First, notice that they didn't tell us that XY was the diameter. So surely we don't know that the angle at Z is 90. We do because it said that XY passes through O, the center, meaning that XY by definition must be a diameter because only diameters pass through the center of the circle. It doesn't seem like it, but they're telling you that XY is a diameter because it passes through O, the center of the circle. And if XY is the diameter, as I said in the previous example, the angle opposite to the diameter, in this case Z, must be 90 degrees, so we can fill that in. Furthermore, we have two angles in the triangle now, so we can quickly deduce that the final angle must be 55 degrees. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Okay, we know which arc is bigger. For example, YZ opposite to the 55 degree angle must be bigger than XZ, which is opposite to the 35 degree angle. But that doesn't tell us a ratio, it just tells us that one is bigger than the other. But there's a final aspect to this amazing secret trick. The proportionality is direct. In other words, the ratio between the angles is exactly the same as the ratio between the arc lengths. Let's lay out the ratio of the angles in the triangle. 35, 55, 90. The 35 is opposite to arc XZ. The 55 is opposite to arc YZ. And the 90 is opposite to arc XY. So let's label those. And now notice that the question is the ratio of the arc YZ to the arc XZ. That's the exact same ratio as the ratio of the two angles. The angle opposite YZ is 55, and the angle opposite to XZ is 35. Simplifying that ratio by dividing by five, we get the ratio 11 to seven. And in summary, that is not only the ratio of the angles opposite, it's also the exact ratio between the two arcs. And there we have it, the final example demonstrating this amazing sneaky angle trick. Now, there are many proofs of this trick, and if there's enough demand for it, I can do a video proving the origin of this trick. But for now, I'm just glad that you know it and have seen it demonstrated with multiple examples. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Have a great day.